I recently got a new gaming laptop, and I decided to test it out with some games. And the game is chess. Now you might be thinking, how do you test out the performance of a gaming laptop in chess? My 10-year-old computer can play that. Well, it's not just chess. It's playing chess against my old computer. By opening a quick analysis from the chess, it is clear that the new computer is much faster, by five times. So, what's the point of comparing them? Well, I'm curious to see how much of a difference does five times more computing power make in chess. So, I opened the new Python script and tested out two things. WebSockets, the thing that I use to communicate between the two computers, as you can see here, and Stockfish. And both of them were tested successfully, so I went on to create my new script. In the script at the top, there are options for which computer to play the white pieces. Darwin is Mac, and Windows is PC. I allot them 5 seconds of thinking time. And then I initiate Stockfish. I chose the aggressiveness to be 10 so that there's less draw results. And I gave them the maximum amount of performance for the computer. I initiated the hash at 2 gigabytes because the Mac only has 80 gigabytes of RAM and it's not really fair to allocate more because the Windows will have even more advantage. Then I have a play game function where the computer will play a single game until the result is decisive. When the result is decisive, it will save the game into a PGN file, which I can access later to see how they did. And finally, I have them play games for 10 rounds before I change the parameters such as the contempt or the thinking time. Here are the results after a few rounds. So the first round was 5 seconds per move. Everything else was set to default. And they drew every single game. <laughs> and then I was thinking, what do world championships do? when players draw every single game. Instead of classical, they go to rapid, which is uh, where a player have less time. So that's what I did. I gave each computer 0 0.2 seconds per move instead. And this time, my new computer edged out, whether it's playing white or black. So finally, I was uh, thinking if that's a trend where the faster uh, the computers make the move, the more noticeable their difference are. So I gave them 0 0.01 seconds per move, the least I can give. And surprisingly, the Mac won one game. Perhaps it's uh, some miscalculation from my new computer, uh, perhaps split second differences um, when I was playing black. So. That's what happened. And when my new computer was playing white with 0 0.01 seconds on the clock, it absolutely crushed my old computer. So these are kind of interesting, yeah. So I spent some time uh, figuring out why when given short amounts of time my new computer, which has around five times more computing power, excels much better than my old computer. So here we can see two functions where it models the, um, the time that's required to reach a certain depth, assuming that there are 10 possibilities for each move. So uh, these are the graphs. and. I calculated the inverse for them. Uh, you can't see them because they're too low here, but they basically model 
given a certain amount of time, what is the depth that the computer will reach? So we can see that when given, for example, 50 uh, units of time, we're not really specifying anything here, um, the T1, which is the old computer, will reach 70% of the depth of the new computer. Uh, of the, yeah. So when given a lot more time, which was what I did in the first time, when given the computer five seconds or something like that, you can see that it reaches around more uh, percent of the new computer. And if given more time, it will reach around more percent of the new computer. So then the gap starts to shrink. So uh, that this, in my opinion, is why uh, when given a short time, uh, the new computer uh, absolutely destroyed the old uh, computer. And uh, it's quite interesting to see. Finally, I'll leave a game that's kind of interesting, where both sides play quite aggressively. Here we have the new computer versus the old computer, both having really high accuracy since they're both stockfish, but they have some mistakes because they only have 0.01 second per move. Before e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, we have a four knights, and we play a lot of theory, a lot of theory until a3, where white says, what is this bishop doing? You want to capture and give me a bit free bishop? Sure. Uh, black says, no, I don't want to give you my bishop. I'm going back and unpinning himself from this. White makes some preparatory moves. And here, he attacks a bishop here and leaving this bishop to die because it will destroy black's pawn structure and white will have the same material. So black doesn't do that. He instead moves the bishop. White moves the bishop out of the way as well. Black targets the pawn. The pawn was protected. And we play some more games until a sacrifice. Apparently this sacrifice is not good because there is really not much attack. However, there is a little bit of compensation, so white comes in with the check. If you go to g3, you start losing because the attack is too strong. Uh, some really open lines here. So white instead goes to h3 and gets hit with a discovery check. However, that is okay because you block and you move into the center. Black comes in with a check, and you block it with a pawn, and black anchors in his knight. However, there is a rook sacrifice, and we move that knight out of the way, because that knight is really annoying, it's too strong. And now, perhaps we have some idea of our, uh, by ourselves to uh, attack on this side of the board as well. Uh, rook comes in. Queen goes to d4, and then f5. King goes back, perhaps feeling not really safe. Uh, king goes to safety on black side as well. King comes more to the center, just uh, perhaps there is no check here, uh, it's more safe. Uh, the computer looks farther into the future, obviously. White makes another preparatory move. Black comes into g1, uh, perhaps looking at some attacks here. And with this pinned piece, so you can actually take if black just plays a random move. Because you can take, take, and take. And this is pinned, black can take back. So here we have Rook e4, another rook sacrifice from the other side now, not from white. However, it was given a question mark because you can just take it. 
Although you get hit with a check, you are safe. And you trade the queen. And we go to a really long end game where the one with slight advantage just rolls through and eventually wins.